A war has broken out in the center of a galaxy far, far away. Countless planets have fallen in the flames of war. Botan was one of those planets. After the destruction of their homeworld, the Watanians, a group of seven races, came to Earth on an ark. They wanted to make peace with the humans, but the human hierarchy refused their request. A war began. The war lasted 10 years and resulted in heavy losses on both sides. The Earth's environment changed dramatically. Both sides had to sit down and renegotiate. With a truce in place, a detente was reached. But the top brass on both sides still wanted to start a war. The few humans and aliens with good intentions finally realized the crisis. They have formed an alliance to form a city of resistance and have built a walled position to protect it. Together they wanted nothing more than to work together to heal a land on the brink of destruction. Another 15 years have passed. The wreckage of a ship floating in space would occasionally crash to the ground. Ian is a scavenger and these wrecks are his favorite. The alien next to him is his adopted daughter. Elena. It's a lucky day. The two of them find a spherical device of great power in the wreckage. It's a treasure worth a fortune. Not only would it pay off all their debts, it would also give them a pass to Antarctica. Antarctica is the last clean slate on Earth and many rich people have moved there. But before they can rejoice, they are surrounded by a group of robbers. They blackmailed Ian with Elena's life and made him give up his energy ball. Ian had to crouch down to comply then took the opportunity to give his daughter a wink. Elena understands and quickly pulls out her knife and attacks the robbers. The two of them worked well together and managed to lose their pursuer. But Elena was shot in the stomach and suddenly collapsed. Ian buried the energy ball in the woods for safety. But just then a group of wild animals surrounded them. In the nick of time, some mysterious men in cloaks appeared and saved Ian and Elena. They were then taken to the city of resistance. The man in front of them is Tom, the city's bailiff. It wasn't long before the newly appointed mayor, Amanda, met Ian in person. Ian was questioned by the mayor and told him the truth, but did not reveal the energy sphere. The mayor also promised Ian that he would let them leave the city safely when Elena had recovered from her injuries. Just then, the bailiff burst into the office. In a panic, he tells the mayor that the eldest son of the richest man in the city of resistance was murdered last night. In the morgue, Wyatt looked at his son's body in agony. The wounds were inflicted by an alien weapon. Wyatt suspects the George family of being responsible. The two most powerful families in the city of resistance are in constant competition. He immediately took his men to the George son to settle the score. The George son didn't know anything about it. Wyatt takes out his gun to avenge his son's death, but Ian stops him just in time. A shot is fired and Tom, the bailiff, is shot and falls to the ground. At that moment George arrives at the bar. But the only way to put things right is to find the real killer. But the only bailiff in town has been killed. Who will investigate the murder now? And that's when Ian volunteered to ask the mayor for a big reward. The mayor agrees to investigate. Ian soon deduces that the killer is the mayor's secretary. Based on the trail he took, White's vengeance was so strong that he blew up the fleeing secretary. But he had only been instructed to cause chaos. The enemy was trying to destroy the defenses of the city of resistance. Now that the tower has been blown up and the shields disabled, the entire city is exposed to the enemy. An army of machines was coming to the city of resistance. The mayor had to gather all the residents to fight the enemy to the death. Ian looked at the innocent people and he couldn't bear it. He dug out the power sphere and tried to return to help them. But Elena refused and the two had to part ways. The battle was about to begin and all the adults of the city of resistance came to the front line to fight the enemy. Although the sphere Ian had brought with him had the power to destroy the world, it took time to activate. The crowd had to fight hard to buy Ian more time. However, there was a huge difference in strength between the two sides and the front line was about to be overrun by the mechanical army. At the critical moment, reinforcements arrive from the rear, and Elena returns with help. At the same time, the energy sphere was successfully activated and exploded with power. The mechanical hordes around the city were instantly destroyed. The city of resistance is saved, but the crisis is not over. The mayor pleads with Ian to stay on as their new ruler to protect the city of resistance, which represents hope. I have never seen such cruelty in execution. The man was seen tied up with an iron basket hanging from the end of the rope. Each weight added to the man's body caused him extreme pain. To add to the cruelty, the man's family was the one who threw the stones into the basket. Such a cruel form of execution is known to the Casties as an evolutionary ritual. They are not human but come 
from the far reaches of the Votan system. In this city of resistance, there are seven alien races living in addition to humans. Eon, the new judge of the city of resistance, couldn't stand it any longer. He tried to stop it, but George told him that the condemned man was a deserter and that it was being done to cleanse his soul. Ian insists on putting the man down, but he doesn't expect the condemned man to be willing to be punished himself. Just then, the mayor, Amanda, arrives, but she has no right to intervene in the ceremony. For in the city of resistance, the traditions of each community must be respected. Meanwhile, the security guards outside the morgue are suddenly attacked by mysterious men. The traitor's secretary is then injected with some kind of potion, and the traitor miraculously comes back to life. The Mysterons give him a secret mission. Not long afterwards, the mines of the city of resistance exploded, and it was said that the traitor had stolen some gold ore and escaped underground, and that this mine led to the former site of a safe. Louis, while most cities were razed to the ground when the landmaking machine was in operation, St. Louis was unique in that it was folded underground, meaning that there was a lost city beneath the mines. The traders had stolen the gold to blow up St. Louis and they had to get them back as soon as possible. The group continued down the mine shaft and soon came to the site of the old St. Louis. Little did they know that there was a nuclear power plant here. If the plant was blown up, the radiation would be enough to kill the entire population of the city of resistance. In the meantime, there was a visitor from the mayor's side, the former mayor of the city of resistance, who was about to collect her personal belongings as she says goodbye to Amanda. The old mayor seems to have something on his mind, and the driver waiting for him outside the door is the same mystery man who rescued the traitor. Little did he know that the former mayor was the mastermind behind all this. If their plan succeeds, the city of resistance will cease to exist. In the nick of time, Ian and his team find the traitor's trail and he is about to activate the detonator. After a fierce battle, Ian was able to contain the traitor in time for the bomb to be defused. But Wyatt wants him dead. After all, he killed his own son but Ian needs him to track down the man behind the bomb, and Wyatt chooses to put his personal vendetta aside. But that's when the traitor pulled the trigger. Amanda, I'm sorry. At this point, Elena is ready to rescue the condemned man, but she was too weak to do so on her own, and she was surrounded by the Kashtians. At the critical moment John helps Elena to get the victim out of the way. But it wasn't long before George broke into the law enforcement building with his men, intending to take the deserter away and Elena refused. But then Ian and the mayor arrived just in time to defuse the situation. George had no choice but to back down in the face of absolute power. But when night falls he finds the deserter again and leaves his body in front of the building. White also finds a large amount of cash in his son's room, a map and a golden badge. What secrets are hidden behind this badge? Man on morning run in the woods suddenly attacked by unknown creature. Two hours later Ian finds the dead man's body in the woods. Pieces of the body were scattered around and even the marrow had been sucked out of the bones. It was the first time Ian had seen such a gory case. Not long after, a similar murder occurred in the city of resistance. After forensic tests, it was discovered that both murders had been committed by a hellbug. While the group was trying to figure out what to do, John found the empty eggshells of the hellbug. But this substance is normally only found in the nests of hellbugs. Now it's in the city of resistance, and someone must be behind it. Tom also found an attack pheromone in the bed of the dead, a chemical marker used to guide the swarm. If we don't find out who's behind this soon, more people will die. Night falls. George's family is enjoying dinner with his future daughter-in-law when they are suddenly attacked by hellbugs. Luckily, George was able to react quickly enough to get rid of the inferno. To be on the safe side, they send Lily home. Ian and his family arrived at the same time. After scanning Lily's body, they found that she also had the attacking hormones. So Ian had to send Lily to the bath and burn her clothes. In order to solve the case as quickly as possible, Ian asks Wyatt about his relationship with the two victims. It turns out that Wyatt had a deal with them. He learns that the two men were speculators who sold land, but that was over 10 years ago. Ian and Wyatt asked for information about the deal, but found nothing useful. That's when Elena saw an old photo, and there was a strange familiarity. The farm in the photo had been bought from a couple of Hyants back in the day. Strangely enough, the Hyants of 10 years ago didn't know any human writing. Ian concluded that the signature on the document was a fake. Just then, John came in. He said that Elena had driven off alone to the farm. 
Ian immediately went to the farm and found Elena had become disoriented. It turned out she had seen some vague visions. Two humans had murdered a Hiente couple and there were flashes of a woman with a spotted face. Elena had seen her earlier in the City of Resistance. To find out the truth behind it, the two find the leader of the Hiente. But he didn't know where the scarred woman was either. But from what he told him, Elena was able to see these images because she had triggered the shadow of Aizu. This is a unique ability of the Hiente. And if Elena enters the illusion again, she will be able to find Scarab's hiding place. The chief then activated Elena's Aizu's shadow through a ritual of sorts. This time Elena saw a more complete picture. It turned out that the two men who had killed the couple were the same two men who had been attacked by the Hellbug. The scarred woman was the couple's daughter. At the same time Elena saw where she was. But Ian, being human, couldn't understand if the vision had actually happened. In the end, at Elena's insistence, Ian led the group into the mine to hide their scent. The group was covered in hellbug droppings. However, the lift broke down on the way down and plunged deeper into the cavern, but the group survived. But what they saw next was so frightening that they couldn't breathe. All around them were hellbugs, and in the middle was a giant queen bug. She was producing baby bugs. Ian was about to load the bombs and get out, but then Scarlet appeared out of nowhere. She was holding a large bottle of attack hormone. If the bottle is shattered, no one will make it out alive. Elena tried to talk her out of it, but it didn't work. It was the only leverage she had for revenge. In the nick of time, Ian quickly picks up the hormone and smashes it into the queen, and the swarm pounces on her. The swarm pounced on the queen, and the swarm escaped to the lift and detonated the bomb on the floor. The insect crisis is finally over. Scarlet avenges her parents' death, but also kills her own life, and will spend the rest of her life in prison, and the farm that Wyatt had bought would be returned to the Hyans. In the days to come, they will work together to build a better future in the City of Resistance.